Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Tuesday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe at Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there. Join the militia. Thank you so much, all of you, for tuning in to hang out with us. We appreciate it. This is your FSU preview, along with a little bit of SU news that has come out. Today and the basketball front, by the way, closing in on basketball and practice started today. And it's hard to believe that we're going to be having yeah. to do the overlap schedule. It feels like just yesterday doing the overlap. No, it see, does. See, well, I'm just glad. Hey, look, I'm just glad we started three and one so that we don't have to hear the chatter of when. I mean, we heard it a little oh, bit when's after that basketball start game, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Syracuse is a basketball right now, school. We're holding our own to keep uh, the fans interested in football um, to this point. Well, the good thing about football and the podcast, as far as any of it goes, it's Sunday and Tuesday, generally, every week. Basketball is a whole nother animal. I got, yeah. we both got a lot going on. It's tough. Yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. It's tough. The basketball gets dicey. You get three games in a week sometimes and stuff like that. So, um, you no, know, I'm hoping that by the time we get in the, min- the meat and potatoes of it, uh, our lives are a little bit more. Well, um, we always roll no matter what. So, um, most of the time, we try. So, uh, okay, we've got a little coach montage. We've got the FSU preview, and we've got a review of our picks from last week and the picks for this week against FSU. So, uh, SU, they have found themselves another carry for the football team. Peter Carey, according to Mike McAllister, over at Syracuse SI. Syracuse basketball has its big for the 2022 recruiting class. Sunderland Mass, Northfield Mount Hermann Center, Peter Carey, who runs with the New York Lightning for AAU. He announced his commitment today, and uh, he visited over the weekend and he was actually in attendance at the Liberty game. By the way, he's seven foot, 210 pounds. So well on his way to being a, a great size for inside of the zone there. So, uh, oh, yeah. right? Don't you think? No, yeah. Got to worry about Absolutely. like this development stuff by the time he gets there. Hopefully, he'll be 225, I hope, maybe, with any that's luck. What you hope for, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. that's. Really, the guy, I mean, some of his offers and everything, this might be a guy he kind of that would have maybe blown up late and might see some teams come in late to try to offer uh, and try to get him to decommit. Uh, I think our biggest um, our biggest competition for him, I think, was Rutgers, which, again, Big Ten team and everything like that. But uh, the good thing about this guy is is, is getting a, a young guy in there, getting somebody on the roster um, in that position, but also, like you said, the upside and the fact that we don't have to turn to him so early. Um, but the fact that Brahm is ready to play, you know, ready to practice right now. We don't know what that's going to turn into and where he's going to be when the games start. But still, we still have Jesse Edwards. And there's been a lot of good news and, and good um, stuff out there with uh, Frank Anselm in in his progression. So uh, good thing is, is depth. this isn't going to be a guy. Yeah, depth. And this isn't going to be a guy that... Um, that we rely on in the, in, you know, in his early years. Uh, and we're kind of just getting back to what we were pre scholarship um, and getting that depth, like you said, where we can you know, bring guys in and develop them over two years to where they can be ready to actually come in uh, instead of being thrusted in there without them possibly being ready. So, right. And he was, as I mentioned, by the way, he's going to be joining uh, in the 2022 class so far, uh, Quadir Copeland. And Justin Taylor, both guards. So he's the third addition to that class. Uh, he yep. was at the game at, at Liber- uh, w- uh, against Liberty in the Dome, as I mentioned. And he n- notably mentioned the crowd, especially the fans, or excuse me, the fans and especially the student fans 
that were that showed up for that game, and it impressed him enough to go ahead and and pull the trigger on on making his decision a little early. So obviously, as we know, until you are wearing a jersey and you are on the court, we are always skeptical. So, yep. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, he seems like a good kid. Seems like a good grab. Uh, very excited about that. Full disclosure. I've been wanting a, a, a good young center to come in uh, for a while as we've struggled, but building this depth is crucial. It's been the, the, the glaring um, you know, negative on this team for going on three years or coming out of three years, roughly. So it goes back to Chukwu right. and, and his injuries and stuff. So anyway, uh, Cody Roscoe. He was named ACC uh, Defensive Lineman of the Week. Obviously, if you watched the game, he uh, helped jar that ball free um, on the strip sack fumble of Malik Willis. And he recorded six tackles behind Malik, um, behind Michael Jones. And he had five sacks in the last two games, according to Mike McAllister, and ranks third nationally with five and a half uh, throughout the whole year. So that's good for him, man. A lot of SU names getting a lot of airtime amongst national media and you know conference media and things like that so it's excellent it's a good sign to let you know hey this thing may be on its way up Here, here's the biggest thing about athletes okay first of all they have to believe in themselves because if you don't believe in yourself nobody will believe in you and then if you're really really good you shouldn't have to tell anybody. Everybody else is gonna tell it for you. The really, really good ones don't have to say a word. Everybody around him will tell him how good he is. And uh, Sean Tucker doesn't speak very much, but everybody knows. Mikhail, Mikhail is like a, like a graduate assistant coach. I mean, when I'm walking through and I'm looking at coaches watching tape, I'll walk by a room and Mikhail is in there watching tape with players on the team telling them what to look at. I mean, that's, that was just last week for the Liberty game, but it's been like that for every week. You know, he is, uh, he's very, very professional, very, very serious about how he goes about his work and he's, He's working like he wants to be a pro someday. That's how what pro guys do. They get paid a lot of money to be professional. Can you comment on the status of Jarvan Howard? He is no longer on my football team, so we only talk about guys on the team. Um, did he give you a reason as to why? He's no longer on the football team, and I only speak about guys on the team. Fair enough. Um, can I also ask about... Um, Everything Garrett could do in fall camp, but you saw him throw a lot of football. Certainly, how would you characterize his performance against Liberty compared to the average day? Was that a good day for him throwing the ball? A bad day? About kind of what you'd expect? I've seen him throw the ball better. <laughs> it was not a good day throwing the ball. That's that's what I think of you. We saw him play against Albany and a few rounds against Rutgers. Like, do you feel like he's capable of doing the things in the vertical passing game that that you guys probably need to do to keep defense balanced? Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna work with him, okay? And we're gonna see how it goes. But he's thrown the ball better than what he did in that game. That was he's thrown the ball better than that. Sure. And I think he even said that after the game. He did. He did. Um, Coach, uh, I just wanted to clarify: Is Chris Elmore eligible to play this week? I'm not gonna answer that question because I don't think it's my right to answer the question. He, he indicated on social media that could be that. I believe you. <laughs> you guys have a good day. All right, the Coach Montage is brought to us by Spotify Green Room. Go to your iOS or Android stores, download the app. All you need is a username, an email address, and a password. Sign up, get logged in, put a profile picture in there, whatever tickles your fancy. Follow us at Cuse Militia. Sign up for notifications. You can find out when we go live on that app. You can join us live. You can talk with each other, amongst each other, I should say, in the green room. You can request to speak, and you can just listen. The great thing is, thankfully, you don't just have to listen to us. You don't have to just follow us. 
You can follow a number of things, a number of topics, and you can do your own thing. So that's what makes it great. It's a great little platform. It's well-designed. It works very good. Um, minimal internet service required. Uh, I have not had any issues using it or messing around with it. So go there. It's free. iOS or Android stores now. Download the app. Get signed up. Give us a follow. And get engaged with us, the Gear Show. All right, Joe. So, um, all right, Tucker. Coach's statement there, brilliant. I love it. Gave me chills when I first heard it. Um, when I listened to the presser yesterday, thought it was brilliant. Speaks for itself. Not a whole lot of commentary I have about that. We know, right? So, with that said, yeah. and if you got commentary on it, feel free. But with that said, the 44 conversations heating up. He's coach was asked about it during the press conference. Tucker was asked about it, said, well, if it was offered, of course he'd wear it, right? He'd be honored to wear it. So it is almost at this point inevitable. Here's my fear. And I guess it's not really a fear. I just would hate to see it happen. Something happen is you get to 44 and something happens or whatever the case may be. It's a lot of pressure. Okay. To live up to that. And what's wrong with the 34? I mean, you can make the 34 just as famous at this point. Right. Mm. So, uh, well, not Duh. just as famous, but you can make it. You can make definitely make a name for yourself. I, I retract that fully, a hundred percent. But you can make a name for the thirty-four. <laughs> now, I'm not against it at all. Period. But what do you think? I think it's inevitable. No. He's going to get it eventually. He. Keeps- I mean, if there's a couple ways you can look at it, right? If he gets the forty-four, number one, um, obviously it brings pressure. Um, other teams and players, they're going to know about it. So it automatically puts a bullseye, which again, people know and coaches know that it's, it's Sean Tucker, but it does give that added pressure. Right. And on top of that too, um, it would probably definitely help with a name, image and likeness. Uh, if he's looking to get money and things like that, because that is such a storied thing. Um, now I've never really looked at 44 as a curse. I think I believe we talked about this the last 44 who wore was Rob Conrad and there hadn't been too many 44s that haven't lived up to those expectations uh at the same time it got to a point where they should have either retired it or they should have done something or maybe it's true that there hasn't been anybody worthy to wear it but um I like Dino's idea when he talked about it on the presser and he talked about you know getting all the 44s together and letting them vote on it um I, I like that idea uh, problem is, is that uh, nobody's had it since Rob Conrad. So if you don't give it to someone eventually, then that board of the forty-four votes um, that kind of goes away here very, well, we very j- shortly. We right? just so. lost Floyd Little, so I guess do, do we get his family involved and whatnot, and maybe I'm, some of the others? But b- 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 where do you go from there, right? right so well, I mean, exactly. there's got to become a point in time where it's either going to help recruiting and we're going to use it as some type of tool for our players, because again, there's a movie made about it. It is there's a legend of the forty-four. Sure, absolutely. So. Now that there's actually name, image, and likeness, you can actually make that recruiting. It's not just, hey, you get this number. Like, hey, actually, you know, there's not too many people who've had this number. When you get this number, you kind of get looked at as something a little different. And this could definitely help your name, image, and likeness. So that definitely could be a recruiting tool. But if you're not going to use that and you're not going to do that, um, then we just need to kind of put this to bed one way or another. Either we have some type of situation where there's qualifications to wear it or we just we, we put we put the the jersey to bed you know what i mean uh jim brown the only one from the original three left and um you know at this point uh, i'm kind of with some of the people where like it's either one of two things you do one or you do the other um you retire it or it becomes a recruiting tool and if it can't be used as a recruiting tool then you just got to retire it and let it go we can't let this just loom over the heads of you know Yeah, i don't think it's a i don't i mean it's a good recruiting tool but i don't think it should be used as a recruiting tool i don't think it should be used as bait but uh, I understand what you're saying, and by no means do I would but I think it was a curse. Do that. I know they absolutely they do, but I'm just giving you my opinion on it. Um, right. uh, by no way do I think it would be a curse. I would just think it's you know it's it's added pressure. There's enough pressure on these guys already. But if he wants it and it's offered to him, then absolutely. Look. I mean, I would love to see it, and I think it's inevitable. I'm Look, just I'm just we're I, just having a conversation about it, and, and, and well, you were right and. It, By the way, I mean, you saw what I posted the other day, right? Which I be- I very rarely post, but I posted on our page, RG3's yeah, his t- top five for the high. By the way, so which far, totally has- confused me. 
when I saw people commenting on it, I'm like, why are people commenting on it? Where did this come from? And then I saw it was posted by you, and I'm like, wow, Joe's on Facebook. Good job, dude. Yeah, I mean, this is the first thing I've posted in a little while, so I figured that you would have said something at this point by now, but hey, I guess you didn't notice it. Um, Either way, let's see what he does in the next eight weeks. Let's not be like, oh, let's give it to him in the middle of the season. Let's see what he does for the next eight weeks. And if he puts up a a number 44-worthy season and he's coming back next year, then that's really where the talk comes from, right? I mean, that's kind of that's kind of. But you're not going to get it mid. You're not going to get it mid season, right? No, why would you? So, but, but but here's again, the thing, though. So they're talking about it after week four when he could, you know, he get hurt or something could happen or he might not be as successful in ACC play. Well, and then next thing you know, three weeks from now, they're like, he doesn't deserve the forty four, right? So well, like, that's my point. That's we- my point is that we are here. We are. We've played, you know. Ohio, Liberty, Rutgers, Albany. Okay, let's finish it out. I think it's inevitable. I don't think the dude slows down. I think he's one of the best in the nation, hands down. But let's just see. Let's ride the 34 out for the rest of the year and see what happens. Well, you got to at this point. I mean, he's got to be the focal point of our offense. Absolutely. Well, we'll get into that. Uh, Michael Jones, the story about Michael Jones watching, watching tape with the guys. I think that's great. It speaks for itself. Total leader. Dude yep. is dude is amazing. Absolutely. Doesn't surprise me. Not at all. A Jarvion Howard enters the transfer portal. Obviously, with the room, uh, the depth that we have at running back, it was almost inevitable that this is going to someone was going to be doing this. So doesn't surprise we, me. It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> he did get a lot of touches, right, so. but he got a lot of touches against. Was it Albany or? Was it Albany? I can't remember. Forgive me. No. I don't have it up. But he didn't get any against Liberty, and we were like, "Well, we we he had got mentioned some in Ohio too." Yeah, well, he had seventy six yards against someone. Yeah, he had so, seventy six yeah. yards at one point, and I can't remember who it was. It could have been Ohio. I think it was Ohio. Okay, all right. It was Ohio or Albany or something. Like that. Okay, know. right, exactly. But uh, we talked in the last episode about in the Liberty post game talking about, you know, he needs more touches. And I was looking at the box score going, why isn't he getting touches? So it's going to be Cooper Lutz. It's going to be Abdul Adams. I think it's, you know, the next, the cream's going to rise to the top, regardless of what we think we see on the field during games. I'll just say that. And who would have known, right. And who would have known if this would even happen last year. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, last year with everything going on, the opt out did not help. The opt out last year. No, I don't think and, that, and I guess that's the point: is that actions, there are certain actions have consequences, right? And if him or Abdul Adams don't opt out, then they probably start this. No, they don't. Probably they, they are. Do. They do start the season one and two, and who knows if they ever even lose their job or if there's even this emergence of Sean Tucker, right? So again, um, you could have played last year and you could have solidified your spot in the top one or two um, in you know the uh, depth chart. Uh, if Abdul Adams would have played, he would have had to have, I think, graduated. But either way, um, that's something that kind of just, I mean, again, he had the right to opt out, right? And I'm not yeah. poo-pooing on his option. No, a he's lot of got people did it. Abdul Adams did it too. Want. Yeah. Right, exactly. They 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 did what they chose to do, what they, they did. They made a decision for them, which is their decision, and that's fine. I'm not going to sit here, and I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the fact that their decisions had consequences because now Sean Tucker came on the scene and then it came to a point where, well, now these guys got to beat out Sean Tucker this year. And in Cooper Lutz too, he, he showed off last year as well, showed out. So um, we knew that our running back room was deep. And honestly, I thought that this was going to be an either Jarvion Howard or Abdul Adams move just in the beginning of the season. I was kind of just waiting for it all to play out. Um, And you know what? I really don't blame him. Um, I don't look at it as he quit. I don't look at it as anything like that. I just look at it as he sees the writing on the wall. He sees how good Sean Tucker is, and he doesn't run a ride out his college eligibility um, because he does have talent. But, well, he, he has got talent. Go to, He's got an extra year. Right. So he can go to another school, and he can, you know, get his you know lead back role, and he could go, and he could possibly make a run at the NFL. We don't know that. But right now, you're behind Sean Tucker, Abdul Adams, some of these other guys. Um, and you know, again, just like last year, uh, you got to make the decision that's best for you. And, um, this just happens to be him having to leave the team. So, 
Uh, moving on, Garrett's throwing. Bad day. Can do better, coach says. We will see. And uh, Garrett's going to have to be the one to show us that and to prove to the fans that maybe it was... Maybe it was a little bit of nerves. I mean, that's intimidating, right. getting your first star in the Dome in front of fans, fans that you're not totally acclimated with yet, that maybe you feel like you could be in one sense or another on the outs. I don't know if you know athletes at that level don't pay too much attention to that, but to say that he wasn't nervous out there is probably absurd. No. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, I think it's a, it's a comfortability thing, man, yeah. to me. I mean, I thought that there was times out there to me where he looked like a first or second year dungy who was still trying to figure it out, but he was out there running, doing what he could, uh, but you didn't really see the, the confidence until year three or four, right? Um, you know, you hope that that doesn't take well, that long to, once he, you know, happen, obviously. Well, right, yeah. And once he knew, once Dungy got acclimated to coach and knew this team was going to be his until he graduated, I mean, he, he settled in. You know, everybody's right. going to have their moments. You know, everybody remembers. We did it here. Calling for, right. well, and calling the crazy for thing is, Devito uh, or for Devito to come off the bench and take Eric Dungy's spot. Right, but we played a good Liberty team. You're talking about an NFL quarterback with a great defense, and I mean our running attack. You kind of, I mean, like again, we talked about the coaching, we talked about all that other stuff. It got better, and we played what we and did what we needed to do to our strengths to win the game. I mean, everyone can talk about Garrett Schrader's passing, and this line doesn't look great, but we still won the game. The so we didn't, rushing, need, the, we didn't need him to do it, right? Yeah. And his legs kind of make up for some of that stuff as well. So um, that's where I'm at. And again, like you said, knowing that it's his team, it's his start, he's got the spot. Um, think I think about, that's going to give him confidence to understand that, you know, I do have to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that a little bit better to keep this spot. And I do also think that the coaching staff will accommodate him with some easier, shorter throws to try to get these guys because you got to keep the receivers and all these other guys happy, too. Yeah. Um, now I lost my train. And Tosh Harris is not going to be happy with two catches for 20 yards for the rest of the season. No, but No. I mean, Taj has got a little bit to work on, too. I mean, everybody's got a little bit to work on. Things are a little bit shaky. It's time to get it together and move on. Uh, Chris Elmore, you can, you, can, you can take that for what it's worth. I'll just throw it in there because I think it would be awesome to see him come back. Very active on the sidelines. We, we obviously never really got a um, – and nor is it any of our business to know what the hell is going on. But uh, nope. it, would be, it would be awesome to see him come back, obviously. And um, – I mentioned Max Mang last I think, show, and he's been doing a good job filling in. But it would certainly be nice to have Chris Elmore come back. So, with that said, oh. well, yeah, and based upon the depth chart that they released this week, uh, Elmore and Benson they're on there. So he, he spoke in his presser about Benson moving around a little bit, and um, you know I wouldn't be surprised to see both those guys back out there. So. It looked like we were actually going to get a lot of the guys back. Jihad Carter was in the uh, was in the two deep as well. So okay. we'll see. Yeah, and obviously uh, one more notable thing, you know, Coach is we we know he's starting Garrett Schrader against FSU, and he's and we'll go from there. So it's going to be um, it's going to be touch and go, and we'll just we're all going to watch it when coach watches it and we can all analyze it and have fun i suppose right yes sir <laughs> if you want to call it fun all right syracuse will face fsu kickoff i believe is at 3 30 on the acc network this saturday afternoon and uh florida state uh they opened up as a four and a half point favorite over syracuse despite being zero and four i don't know if that's moved yet joe uh, but this is the first time the Seminoles are starting 0-4 since 1974. Okay, they're hungry for a win. We can we can add that into the formula here. But they had a little bit of a QB controversy kind of in the beginning of the year, at least at the beginning of the year, I should say. Um, they started uh, Jordan Travis in the season open, opener. 
he was ineffective enough to make a swap to senior Mackenzie Milton. Both of them got snaps for the first three losses of the season, and the last loss against Louisville, it was all Milton, 24-39 for 248, one touchdown, one interception. Uh, the consensus among fans and writers alike, uh, just, just kind of scrolling through some of this stuff after a three-win season last year, the season opener looked good. We talked about it here. looked pretty promising uh, going up against the ninth-ranked team in the nation and uh, taking them into overtime, being Notre Dame. They trailed by 18 mm-hmm. at one point. Milton came in and, well, M- Milton, yeah, Milton came in, actually, and that's when he came in, and they nearly won the game for him. Okay, they lose by a Hail Mary pass against Jacksonville State. They get blown out by Wake Forest uh, at Wake. Uh, They tried to mount a comeback against Louisville despite holding them to zero points in the second half and still failed to even come close. Really, eight points, 31 to 23. Um, That's a score. Yeah, no, I mean, they got close. It was pretty much a blowout for for, it was 31 to seven, I think, at halftime. Um, right. their, their sharpest tool in the shed is get this. Okay. Very familiar sounding is, um, sophomore running back, uh, Jashawn Corbin, six foot, 221 pounds, 439 yards on 48 carries so far this year, despite only having three TDs, he's good for about nine yards a touch. Um, he's their guy. Okay. Just like Tucker's our guy. It's a very similar situation and he can get loose in a hurry. Joe, he gashed Notre Dame for a run of 89. He gashed Louisville for 75. Uh, one thing I noticed too, is that he's caught nine passes for 70 or excuse me. He's got nine passes for 49 yards. Sean Tucker also has caught nine passes for 175 yards leading, leading the orange in receiving actually. Tucker, second in the country in rushing right now at 536 yards. Deshaun is 12th with his 439. Three linemen to worry about, defensive linemen. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, the second. He leads the team in sacks with five and a half. He's actually tied with Cody Roscoe for the year. Um, 12 solo tackles. Uh, Amarni Gaynor, not, um, let's see, one sack, 28 tackles. And uh, Kalen Deloach, 13 um, excuse me, 25 total tackles in a sack. So those are kind of the guys up front. That Jermaine Johnson, the second defensive end, he's he's really the one you need to watch out for on defense. Joe, so uh, their bell cow is a running back. Our bell cow is a running back. So it should be interesting. Mm-hmm. Should be interesting. He's he's their guy, this, um, this running back they got. And... Um, I mean, they're only a couple plays, really, away from being 2-2. Two and two. So, I mean, you look at right. an overtime loss against Notre Dame and the Hail Mary against Jacksonville State, which was just... No, I mean, yeah, you're talking about yeah. a play, too, against Louisville. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, true. Yeah. And that's really where we, where we go with that, right? So Florida State, as much as they look like... And it's going to be bad, too, because we're going to Florida State, right? Florida State still has athletes. They still recruit well and um right now because they're own four and they lost to jacksonville state which again we, t- we we watched it bad loss um obviously but uh they're ranked as the worst team in the acc so as high as you know our the writers and some of these people are about syracuse oh three and one and they already got to the vegas over under for wins and are we on our way to a bowl game and you know we're starting to see this overconfidence again right yeah, well, um, that's the that's the that's the pendulum swing of Syracuse sports. Exactly, there is no middle ground, <laughs> right. right? It's yeah. one or the other, right? Uh-huh. So, um, it's basically a situation where when you really look at minus Jacksonville State, which again um, is a game that you know they probably win nine out of ten times this year, right? Uh, when you look at Notre Dame, Wake Forest, and Louisville, their combined record is eleven and one. You're looking at a Wake Forest team that's beaten everybody by 20 points. We still don't know how good they are. Um, we're yeah. looking at a Louisville team that has only lost to the first game uh, against Mississippi. And Notre Dame, as much as you know, they almost you know they lost this game. And then the next week they had a tough one against Tulsa. They've only gotten better. They just blew out Wisconsin pretty bad. So, albeit it was all kind of in the fourth quarter so realistically um it's hard to gauge this team when they have like one bad loss and then three losses to some teams that um are in a pretty good situation so um this to me is as bad as it sounds like i mean it's really got it's really got trap game and i don't even want to say trap game because like you said we're a four and a half 
you know, point underdog, you know. I don't want it to be a trap game, but again, uh, Florida State isn't as bad as is what they're saying. Um, Mackenzie Milton, to to your point, he um, although his longest throw this year is twenty three yards, yeah, he gives him that. you know a dual he gives him a two a, a dual threat option. Uh, but I mean, both quarterbacks have thrown I think four interceptions this year for a total of eight. And um, they've both been sacked have, seven just, times too. By the way, I mean, right? It's worth yes, mentioning. yes. And so they've been a little sloppy, and we've played them in the past where their offensive line has has had some trouble, uh, especially against the pass rush. So, again, a team that kind of looks like us because they got that one guy right. I mean, Cody Roscoe is ranked, I think, third as far as sacks per game in the nation, and he just won the defensive to- line ACC player of the year, right? Total sacks so, for the year. I think they're both five and a half. This uh, Jermaine Johnson the second and Cody Roscoe, I think, are tied for the year. Right, they're tied in like for the year, and th- but they're third, third in place the in the country. Yeah, yeah. So both teams have pass rushers as far as that stuff goes. Uh, again, this is a team that's got the athletes and. You know, I hope that you know we're not resting our laurels off this this Liberty win, and it's still going to be, I think, a big deal to these kids to to go down to um, Florida State and play in front of that crowd, right? Um, so, yeah, you know, t- they come down that's to, their, they've got a 12th man that's just as effective, basically. Yeah, I mean, but they had a lot of fans leave when I mean that Louisville game. They were down 31-7 in the second quarter. And they made it 31-23. So minus the Wake Forest game, which, again, Wake Forest, I mean, we're going to find out how good they are here shortly. Um, But other than that, their defense has given them a chance to win. And really, I'm just afraid of, you know, really what, you know, our defense has played well, but but what are they preparing for? Because um, I think, again, coming down to this game, it's going to be close like Liberty, where it's going to come down to, um, you know, penalties, coaching, you know, stuff like that. And... Um, that's just something that Florida State hasn't been great at. Um, and also they've shown that they don't have a problem going to their other, quarter, other quarterback with Jordan Travis as well. So uh, Mackenzie Mil- Wil- Milton, you know, he's um, a game manager and he can run the ball, but doesn't really throw the ball well down the field. And like I said, a lot of their their drives this year have I mean, not come up with points because of turnovers and because of penalties and stuff like that. So uh, if they can clean some of that up, they can look like a lot better of a team than we are. And, and Jordan Travis is the guy that comes in and throws those deep balls. He's had some 60, 60 plus yard balls for touchdowns um, connected this year. So if McKenzie, I can see a situation where if McKenzie Milton, if he doesn't, you know, get the job done, they can bring him in. And I just hope that we're ready for some of the speed with the receivers and the, in the down the field throws, because um, if it's going to be Milton and we're going to be able to keep well, everything in front of us and still kind of get a pass rush, then it's really just stopping the running game. So, well, Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start with Milton. At the end of the day, so far this year, he's got zero yards rushing. Okay, because he's been sacked so many damn times. All right, right. But uh, so okay, there's blood in the water there. I mean, our defense, they eat vulnerable mm-hmm. stuff up. They're gonna eat, that's vulnerable. Oh yeah. They're gonna eat mm-hmm. that up. This Jordan Travis. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. I mean. He He's was young, he was, takes chances. Yeah, he was yanked pretty quick. I don't know what their game plan is for him, but obviously, like you said, Syracuse is going to have to prepare for both, but I don't see it being anybody but Milton unless he has a terrible day. Um, well, I'm pretty the, sure they labeled Milton as the starter. But. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure he's starting too. I mean, um, uh, D- Travis didn't even touch, take a snap against Louisville. So no, and, and they were down. I don't think Jacksonville stayed either when they lost. So no, they did. He did. He took th- three. He was zero for three. Mm, no. So well, I yeah, don't know how many snaps but. he took, but he was zero for three passing. Um, right. So uh, d- yeah, Deuce Chestnut. I mean, obviously he's young. He's learning. He's coming into his own. So that's going to yeah. be that's going to be a big target for the uh, you know for Florida State to go after him. They saw some vulnerable things there. Uh, what's his name? Antarine, what the hell's his name? Wilson? <laughs> Antarina? Wilson. What the hell's his name? What the frick? That caught me off guard. I had to I had to zoom in on it. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Wilson, the receiver, he's their leading receiver, 133 yards. But it's gonna be Antari. It's gonna, yeah. Antari. Okay. It's gonna be Andrew Parchment, okay? Uh, that that is going, you know, I mean, depending no, on how they do yeah. it, but uh, you know, Deuce Chestnut's going to be targeted. Okay, he showed some. He showed some some 
vulnerability there. But uh, the thing is, is can they get down the field fast enough? I mean, if our defense has time uh, on the bench between series, they're going to be they're going to be after it. I think that's how this right. game is won again. And I mean, we're going to be relying on this. This is not something that is new, and it's not going to be something that ends this year. We're going to be relying no, heavy. It was an, no, yeah, yeah, we're going to be relying it was an adjustment heavy, that our yeah. coaching staff had to make, right? Right. Yeah. So we're going to be Give reli- us the best chance to win. Yeah, we're going to be relying heavy on the defense, and we'll see what kind of curveballs Garrett Trader can throw as he starts this game. And I don't care. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not on Team Garrett. I'm not on Team Tommy. I just want to win. That's all. I don't care who plays better or who gets me the W. I just want the W. I don't care mm-hmm. if it's one point or 50 points. So Yeah, and this team, they they run, they run a lot a lot more than they throw. I mean, we talk about our receivers being upset. You know, their leading receivers, their leading receiver, I mean, there's three of them that have nine catches. I mean, they don't even have a, a guy that has double-digit catches for the season. So that kind of just tells you where they're at as far as the state of passing the ball and everything like that. So, um, again, they're going to have to show a little bit more on offense. And even you when call you listen Wilson? to some of these – what did you call Wilson? What's that? What did you call Wilson? What's his first name? Ontaria. Ontaria. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay. Yeah. So, um, gosh, just interrupt me. <laughs> Kid can't I'm even so, read. I'm sorry. Unbelievable. I was so, I was so just, fixated on that. But, but basic, basically, it's one of those things where, you know, this it, there, it's close enough to where if we get beaten coaching and, and penalties and special teams – then, then it can make up for how good our defense might play against this offense. Um, I think we need to worry about, um, you know, Jordan Travis coming in and bringing a little bit of a different type of, of, of passing game. But um, to your point, it's really just stopping Corbin and making him. And, and realistically, both defenses have the same job, right? Yeah. Stop, stop the run. Back, stop the quarterback from running back, right? So yeah. I mean, that's really what it is. And then make them pass and beat you. So uh, I, that's I don't where, think they can do it. Well, that's everyone has their own opinion, right? So I'm just and then, saying. like I said, when when you listen to the Mike Norvell like um, stuff he talks about, and even his his press conference after losing to to, to Louisville, um, there's some stuff in there that makes you kind of think that he's still kind of trying to to win over the full locker room. Like he's still trying to figure out like guys are in there that might not be all in or might not be all in in his philosophies and how he wants to coach and. Um, you know, obviously that's something he needs to figure out. And he says he, he feels confident that, you know, he's seen his, his way work before and he feels confident that they're going to get the guys in there to make it, to make it happen. But, uh, you know, listening to it, it seems like it's like a rebuild and it seems like it's just trying to figure stuff out. And obviously you're probably going to hear that from a Florida state coach that's 0 and 4 and got the worst start since the seventies. So yeah, before I was I even mean, we'll, born, we'll s- Malik Cunningham, yeah, 50, M- M- Malik Cunningham led Louisville too, by the way, in rushing yards with 56, and they they totaled 131 in their last game. Um, yep. Um, so, and just a couple of things, real quick. Syracuse ranks 10th in total defense, allowing 261 yards a game. It's really good, 4.2 yards yep. per play. FSU ranks 94th in total defense, allowing 415 yards a game, 5.2. Okay, now they played Louisville, uh, 264 yards passing. They played Notre Dame. Don't have it in front of me right now, but obviously, obviously that went into overtime as well. But um, yeah, you're talking about the top ten team in two ACC. Let me just see what they did. 366 yards passing from yeah from Jack Cohen. So Cohen, Cohen, whatever. Um, So you know. I don't obviously think we're going to put up big passing numbers, and that's where a lot of their a lot of their defense flubs come from. Um, you right. know, uh, Notre Dame only rushed for sixty five total yards, but on one hand, you know they they did rush thirty five times, so that you got to take yeah. that into consideration. That's a lot. Um, uh huh. Total offense, Syracuse ranks seventy seven or seventy second, averaging three hundred ninety two yards a game, six yards per play. FSU ranks seventy six, so really close there. They average three hundred eighty six yards a game, five point seven yards per play. So, 
Um, and we know the rushing. They, these guys are really close as far as their rushing averages and handles and uh, touches and all that stuff goes. So um, it's going to be interesting, but that's it, man. You got your defense. Both teams' defense need to step up, stop the run. And uh, whoever, right. whoever, whoever runs the best or stops the runs the best or a combination of both is going to win this game. See, I think it's more – I mean, that's a part of it, but I think a lot of it comes down to – I mean, I think the key takeaway from this is, is that this team – isn't as bad as this 0 and 4 suspects. No, I don't think because so. Because if either. we, yeah, I mean, I think if, if we played this schedule trying to figure out our quarterbacks, then we'd be 1 and 3 or 0 and 4 or something like that, right? So, I mean, when you look at it, um, well, would you look that, at I, that? that's kind of my. What's that? I said, well, would you look at that? What? <laughs> Nothing. Go on. Go on. You said, like, look, at you said look at it. You said look at it. I said look at it. If we st- imagine if we if, imagine if we started week one when we beat Ohio twenty nine to nine and it was still a game in the third quarter we played Notre Dame oh, and Wake Forest is on a tear in Louisville smoked. like we weren't ready in the first four weeks to play those teams no. and I mean you know so it's a situation where I don't want to judge this team based upon a, a gauntlet of the first four games of their season. Um, I want to look at where their weaknesses are and everything like that. And kind of, like I said, the takeaway of this is that this team isn't as bad as, as people say and and that it looks and that little things like the penalties and being out coached and be getting beaten special teams could be the the difference in this game. Can I, can I just point something out real quick too? Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your thought. I was just, we don't have a, a lot of room for error for the way that this offense no, is playing and, right now. No. Until Garrett Schrader gets more comfortable and we can get our passing game involved and put up more points, then um, our our room for error is low. So that's what I mean. Like, this could be a 0-4 team, everything. We're still an underdog going to Florida State. They play better competition. Like you said, they're hungry, starving for a win. And here we are going down there on a high while these guys are like, I'm, I'm not trying to get – you know, embarrassed again at, at home by Syracuse, so, by right, Syracuse. Right? You know, I mean, and, and, yeah, and we could be three and one, but again, at the end of the day, that's that's real. That's what it is. That's what they're thinking. Um, yeah. So that was Tyler trying to call Tyler. Ty, that was Tyler, by the way. If you guys heard that, he hung up. I don't know what's up with that. Um, yeah, what's going on with that? What's up I don't with know. that? I don't know what's up with that. He he accidentally FaceTime me. What's up, Tyler? You just. Hang up? What is this? Crank anchors? I mean, if you so, got something to say, we, I mean, we can get you on. We can yeah, talk about dude, it. Yeah, dude, all you got to do is text me. Hold on. Did he text me? He didn't. Must have been, hmm. an, ac- must have been an accident. But I'm definitely going to call no. him out because it interrupted, the, it no, inter- it interrupted the recording. Let's call him. Let's, let's do it. Back. After this stat, after this stat, let's, let's do okay. an impromptu real quick. Um, so if you look at both of our quarterbacks for the year so far. Tommy DeVito, 32 of 52 for 388, 61.5% completion rate, 7.5 average per, per completion, 73 long. I want you got to remember this. One TD, two interceptions, six sacks. Okay? That's the stat line. Garrett Schrader, 22 of 37, 317 compared to 388, 59.5 compared to 61.5, 8.6 yards a completion compared to 7.5. 72 long compared to 73. We all remember that. It was mostly Tucker. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, one TD, one interception compared to one and two. Uh, sack two times compared to six. So when we talk about, you know, it is so clear that one or the other, and you, for whichever argument you want, it, I'm sorry, it is not. It is not clear at all. No. In which, which is why Coach is in the situation he's in. It's not clear. If it's black and white, no. it had been announced black and white. It's not. It's very, very freaking close. Right. And realistically, again, um, you look at the rate, their QBRs. Yeah, Garrett Schrader has a better QBR than him as far as rating goes. Uh, and uh, to me, Garrett Schrader offers, um, you know, a bigger threat uh, with, this, with his legs. You know, and that's me with his legs, with his size, everything like that. I mean, Tommy, he can get out and get on some, you know, some some long ones. But at the end of the day, I, I feel like he's going to get hurt if he keeps doing that. Right. So, oh, I mean, yeah, I think at the so. end of the day, I think 
for right now, we need to put it to bed and hope that um, that the offensive coordinator can get some some passing plays and some different things out there for Garrett Schrader. But you know, it's not orange is the new fast. It's not what we saw against Liberty, but it worked. It was effective. It was our strength, and that's 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 good coaching. You know, it's not forcing a square into a round peg. It's it's forming your philosophy or your team or your play calling to the players that you have give you the best chance to win and that's what you saw last week against liberty and that's why we won and by the way the only interception that we have so far this year is deuce chestnut the other the other thing is too that we didn't point out in the last show is that liberty had not turned the ball over on offense and uh boy but howdy one time boy Didn't howdy yeah and they almost got away with it they almost got away with it for another game but uh they did um, obviously i usually like putting that putting that out there on twitter um getting because of this defense so anyways all right should we bring tyler in for picks is that what we want to do here dude i don't care i'm gonna call him because i want to know why he called and we're live so screw it let's go okay let's see what happens here I'm trying to add him i don't hear anything I don't hear anything. It's calling. I'm coaching you through it. It's calling. I think it's ringing. We don't know. Oh, actually, I do know. I can see it. Will he pick up? That's a question. Will he pick up? That's what I want to know. I don't. Well, he does. He has oh. joined. Time out. Tyler. What's up? <laughs> what is going on, Tyler? You call us in the middle of you a podcast, the- and you don't think that we're going to call you back live? Well, no, I was I was hoping this whole thing would work out exactly the way it did. Are you being serious? <laughs> or are you full of shit? Let me just let me just get prepared real quick. <laughs> <sighs> He's plugging in, gang. He's plugging in. Give him a minute. I like the, I like the spectacles, son. You look studious. Thanks, man. It's called bad eyesight. The doctor puts them on you when you can't see anymore. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's facts. What so, you guys, what are you guys talking about? We were just talking about uh, heading into FSU. We had just finished up, but we were going to do picks. And we thought, okay. hey, bring, let's bring Tyler on for picks because he just called, even though it might have been accidental. Uh, we decided to call you back. Uh, so, Well, hey, hey. Before we get there, but we well, yeah, take, I mean, I want to get, Tyler have any things about this game. I mean, well, I would like to get his thoughts on the quarterback controversy first, and then get his thoughts on the game, and then we'll do picks. Wow. Well, I'm not. I'm not trying to take a segment. I'm just. I'm just a mere fly on the wall, fellas. All. I, all I'm trying to do is I was gonna call and ask a question about the season moving forward. That's that's what I'm calling about. Okay. Uh, you do you the, then. Well, <laughs> I just I just needed to get it out there in the open before I forget before we go into all this other stuff. But I, I did I did not mean to override your show. Thank you. I'm I'm a graceful, you know, first time, long time, obviously. So um, <laughs> it's not the first time. It's long time, long time. Long, long time. <laughs> many yeah, many time. Anyway, um, <laughs> quarter, quarterback controversy. I think there was. I gotta hand it to Sean. He was right. He was absolutely right. I don't know what I was holding out for. And, and the reason why I was holding out was because I think my, my new concern and what my original question for the show is, I'll just segue right into it, is um, are you guys worried about the receivers on this team outside of Alford or the supporting cast around him yet? Because I, I am. And as we get into ACC play, I think the reason why Tommy doesn't have a job anymore is the O-line has, I don't know if you guys saw in the game last week, but they were like road grading Liberty. Like it was not, like this line is different. They still struggle in the pass game. But if Tommy had receivers, I think at this point in his career, he would be in a better situation or maybe he would be playing better. Um, That's the last lifeline I can give the guy because I like the guy. I've seen him in person. He looks the part. I mean, it just doesn't really make sense. But when you think about it from a macro perspective, and we have two four-star quarterbacks on the roster competing for the starting job. When was the last time Syracuse had that? Not – you know, and no, then we also God. have an all-American running back behind him, and we have an offensive line. So why couldn't a four-star quarterback get it done? I'm worried about the receivers. I'll hang up and listen. Well, obviously the receivers are a concern. I mean, Taj Harris is. Um, I'm still waiting for him to to step up. Sean Tucker leads all receivers. 
uh, by, you know, he's, he's four yards over Taj Harris right now. So, um, I mean, you can't sustain that all year, right? So mostly screen passes no, and stuff, not. obviously. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know Joe. Joe was a receiver. He knows the position well. Um, Alfred, surprisingly good, in my opinion. Um, but I know same. the position. Well, look. You look, know the position better than I do. Huh? Well, 100%. But I was also in a situation where I was like in an offense like you saw last week where you're mostly doing blocking. <laughs> and every once in a while you get to go out there and you're kind yeah. of – Stab in high school, you can't just enter the transfer portal because your quarterback <laughs> can't get it done, right? So right. at the end of For the sure. day, at the end of the day, um, in this situation, and we talked about this earlier a little bit, uh, Tyler, was that you worry about some of that because Tosh Harris is not going to be okay with two catches for 20 yards for the rest of the season. Well, he said and, he struggles um, catching the ball too. I mean, you got to catch it too. Uh, there's a little bit of there's a there's a there's enough blame to go around. I guess is what I'm saying. But but but, but two. Tyler's point, our offensive line is built to, to run the ball, pave roads, yeah. to pave roads. And when you get a situation like Garrett Schrader where he's getting rushed and he's going to go and he's going to try to get to the line of scrimmage or he's going to get some yards versus Tommy who is going to take the sack or throw a bomb up and hopefully right. something happens, right? I think, again, it's and, and we talked about it last week, it wasn't the poo-poo Tommy as much as I saw it in Rutgers, uh, Tyler, where – you know, Tommy, he uses his legs against Ohio. He uses his legs against Albany. But when it came to Rutgers, he didn't take those opportunities. He didn't yeah. keep that defense. He didn't keep that defense to the point where they're like, I'm afraid that, you, you know, they didn't, he didn't keep him honest. And that's what Garrett Schrader does. And if last week was one of the better coaching jobs I've seen from Babers in a little while because that coaching staff completely changed their way, the way that they did everything as far as offense, because it's like, all right, come and stop this. Right. I'm going to hand the ball yeah. off. Garrett's going to hold it here. He might run it every once in a while, you know, but come and stop it. And that's the scary thing is, is that now we're at a situation where we know what our offense is. It's just the defense has got to come and stop it. But Schrader's got to have to have something in his back pocket if they do stop it, because you got to have a passing game. And against some of these ACC defenses, they're going to force that. That, and that is more so what my fear is moving forward more than anything else, because so Garrett, his his way to end a play is way different than Tommy's. To your point, Joe, is like Tommy's way to end a play is that like Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady, when they're in trouble in the pocket, they just launch it like a million yards downfield to the one guy that they have in the route concept that's all the way down yeah. there. <laughs> Except for Tommy would like take those opportunities to like try to actually put it on the money, and like it would it doesn't. It, does, like, it just way. never works. Yeah. <laughs> and Garrett Schrader is like, rather than do that, I'm going to try to go get six yards and then sl hopefully slide. I had my hand <laughs> over my mouth when the guy like doubled up on the tap and like his helmet flew off. I was like, <laughs> if we, because remember, Michael and I lived through the Eric Dungy experience where every mm -hmm. time that he was running and even the coaching, it was like bated breath. Like you could hear a pin drop in the dome. And when, Eric Dungey would slide. The coaching staff would be like high fiving down the sidelines. Like we finally yeah, like, got him. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So it's like if we can just take that, give the you know the Dungey good year where he slide. You know, give that to Garrett moving forward. I think we'll be better. But we got to get some receivers, man. Like I, we got to get the ball in their hand, one way or another. Like I'm fine with it being the short game. The NFL is actually doing a couple teams like the Chargers doing a really good job right now playing the short game. Uh, Raiders are doing a good job at that too, and then you know throwing a long one. But um, it it has to happen if you're going to be running the ball so much. Similar, you know, another pro example, Tennessee Titans. Uh, right. We got to connect on the play action, and that's what makes them dangerous. We got to connect on that. So. Oh yeah, and that's kind of what I looked at even with Rutgers when you saw their second touchdown. I mean, they set that up. They said they didn't throw the ball downfield in the middle of the field all game. You know, and they just hand the ball off, hand the ball off, short throw, short throw, short throw, boom, hit you with the big one. And that's what it's got to be. Um, there's nothing wrong with catching a ball at the two yard mark, or the two yard pass and running it like Tucker did at the screen pass, right? Right. You just got to be able to have that in your back pocket. No doubt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> cool. So, all right. Let's see, are we, uh, do we, um, do we want to do picks? Tyler, do you want to stay for picks real quick? 
Don't take yeah, I don't. I don't really know that much about Florida State. I gotta admit, I, they're the one team I never really care to watch. I watched the Notre Dame game, but that's about it. And they, they apparently they're an entirely different team from that day than they are now. So, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, the, yeah. Well, you look at that game and you think, well, man, they there's they might be pretty good. They only you know they went took took Notre Dame in the overtime and um, you know lose by a field goal. And then you right. saw Jacksonville State, and then you saw them get blown up by Wake Forest. So, well, the Jacksonville State was like I said, that was an anomaly. They went them. Nine, yeah, it they was beat them nine out of ten times. Like, and then you talk about the three other games was what at Wake Forest, home against Louisville and Notre Dame. I mean, they've had a gauntlet of the first four games of the season, like two ACC games plus a Notre Dame. <laughs> Where's their non-conference? Like, I don't understand. So I think this team is definitely a little better, and obviously we know the athletes they get and stuff like that. So, um, And then we spoke earlier, and I think one of the bigger things, like we talked about, um, Tyler, earlier was um, coaching, um, not having penalties, you know, and, and special teams. Those are the kind of things that you know, we beat Liberty with, and we're probably going to have to beat these guys too. I don't think this is going to be a shoe-in, even though everyone looks at Florida State as the worst team in the ACC. Right. Yeah, they're well. That was us in a couple days ago, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Go ahead, sorry, Sean. right be right before the right before the Liberty win, and, and we were talking about that too. The the pendulum swing, uh, you know, is just it's crazy with the Syracuse fans. I mean, um, you know, they're either way too high or you know ridiculously low. That's one or the other. So yeah. it's just the nature I saw, of it. I saw it back to the moon uh, on Saturday. I was like, that was one of the best days I've had in a long time. I went to the UH Navy game out here in Houston. That was pretty cool. Just go check out, you know, another stadium. But um, yeah, dude, I was smiling ear from ear. People were, you know, because it was the only game on on a Friday night. So everybody, when we were going out to have barbecue beforehand, like, hey, man, you know, congrats to you. There's nothing better in the world when somebody else is happy for your success as a football fan. So... Yeah, yeah, I was. I was all. I'm. I'm sky high right now, fellas. No, and most people. Most if you're a college football fan that's into it, you know that Liberty's a good team. That and wasn't it, just a exactly. Yeah, and it's it's hard not to get overly excited. I mean, um, you know, I'm fully confident in this because, and we've mentioned this before, Tyler. But we we could be. We are so close to being four and zero right now, and then you know, <laughs> the sky's the limit after that. But we are so close. With a similar Sean. game plan to being able to to beat Rutgers, uh, if, it sucks. If you, if my if my wife was here right now, I saw your tweet that you tweeted. I, I stood up after the win, and my wife, if she was here, could attest to the fact that I was saying if we just didn't give up basically against Rutgers, we would be four zero. And then immediately, I opened Twitter. I see your tweet. Syracuse should be four zero. Instant validation in that moment, and I was like. You know what? Like, it hurt more in retrospect that we lost to Rutgers. I think. Are you like? I think. Are you I think. There? Yeah, I think Coach is kicking himself for that. I mean, obviously, he's not going to go through and relive that, especially in, in 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 you know in front of the media or anything like that. But it is what it is. But obviously, they stopped running the ball, and um, that was it. I mean, they were in the game. Yeah, it wasn't like oh, a man. blowout. I mean, I mean, I don't know. It's just the how I, it's just how I feel the about it. Field goal. Yeah, I mean, the fumble. We lost. Yeah, we lost to Shiano, man, and his crying on the sideline. That was oh one of the my worst gosh, officiating yeah. jobs oh, I've dude, ever yeah. seen. That was a classic. Bro, series. tell me you didn't see him. This game. Make it right. Make it right. Make he it right. very got, next play. He got to yell at them for thirty minutes. Dino says one word. He gets a fifteen-yard flag. Are you yep. like that? That was that one of the worst games I've ever watched, man. That was awful. And, oh. and to that point, too, Rutgers did just, what, lose a Michigan 20-13, to 13, close one at the Loud House. Rutgers is good. We're good. Maybe. Maybe we're good. Like, who knows? I'm not going right. to go there yet, but, like, but I don't know. If we that go, game was coaching. If we go that, to— It was. You're right. You're right. It was. Yeah, but that was— I don't the know. The fumble, if, dude. It changed after the fumble because that was not—like, that was just not our fault. No, it was a bad call. as soon as that happened, it was over, man. Yeah, it was like, a bad call. Like, that team couldn't handle that adversity. Right. And you also looked at it like there were some people that thought Tommy had a little bit of rhythm going, but then you brought in Garrett. 
And then Garrett yes. got a little rhythm at the end of the second quarter, right? And then at the <laughs> next half, you bring in Tommy. You completely messed up all that. And then Tommy, at that point, out of the game. Like I, it, There was a lot going on there. Uh, I wish that we could have that one back. But we did, when we had our podcast, we said, you know, main, main goal was 3-1 and one in non-conference. And, and realistically, my, I thought that Liberty was going to be the hardest game. Me too. Came out, and we redeemed ourselves from that Rutgers win and yeah. really – I mean, you want to be 4-0, but all you can really do is go for it at this point. Yeah, I'm willing, one, to, I'm, happy yeah. I'm willing to take one loss or, like, use the Rutgers game as the example of, like, why our team eventually became good throughout the season. That's yeah, I think that's yeah. a notable, tr- you know, it's a learning lesson. We go from there. But yep. in college, man, you have to be greedy. Like, this ACC, by the way, guys, it's, it's <laughs> open. <laughs> Fellas, yeah. like, we're in this thing. I'm telling yep. you. Who would have thought? <laughs> I'm out. Well, look, NC State looks good. Wake Forest looks good. Louisville looks good. But they don't look like world beaters. And Clemson damn sure don't look like the same team. So I'm right there with you, man. Well, couldn't have happened to a worse program. You know, you hate to see that happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Pigs from last week. Joe, 27-24. Not bad. Not bad at all, dude. Only off by six total points. 24 uh, actually, off by, yeah, by six total points plus plus you pick the winner, so technically, one, right? Yes, that is nice. the math. That's the math. That's a good call, man. That's really That's good. Call. It's really really good. Really really good. But it's not as good as twenty four twenty one, right? Because that was the score, right? Right. Yeah. That was yeah. Score. That, okay. That's what I thought. Cause that's Who what I picked. That? I picked that. 24 21. Oh, wow. So, wow. first time for everything. Uh, now, I would like to get your Crazy. thoughts on this from the, from the socials picking the score. Dominic picks, acknowledges he's picking my score. Does that count? Crickets. Does it count? <laughs> he stole your score. Yeah, well,. He said I stole his score, but I mean, let's did you be do like oh, some yeah. like? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> did you do some like Marty McFly Dominic. shit where you like went back? Went back in, in time. This whole, yeah. How did you know no. Dominic? <laughs> no. Maybe Dominic did. I don't know. Uh, no. Uh, look, two things. We're not going to count that, Dom. I love you, dude, but I don't know if that we can count that. But great minds think alike. Okay, it's plain and simple. But the other thing is, if you guess, shut up, Joe. If you guess <laughs> the score, it's got to be negative more points. It has to be. So we'll figure that out later. I'm not going to demand I take them now because we didn't have that rule set. That's fine. So negative five at the end of the day. I'll take that. Joe, one, very good. All right. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. That's who. Um... Syracuse defense shows up again. It's very hard to come on here and be like, Syracuse is going to lose, especially after what's been going on and what we've been watching and hopefully this team being on the rise. Sean Tucker, um, I think, can go off. I think this this Gare Trader, Ta- Sean Tucker, and the defense, we see a very similar game like we saw against Liberty. Maybe, maybe not. I guess that's just what I'm hoping for. But I say 31-28 Syracuse. Okay, another nail biter. Um, Mid afternoon, early evening, right? Yeah, early evening. So, does Florida State have that type of offensive firepower? I mean, they've put up some. Yeah, they they have. They've done it late a couple times, but they have. I mean, they put up what thirty eight against Notre Dame. They put yeah, up. Yeah, but no. Oops. Who cares? What is this? Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you with Notre Dame, bro. I mean, I, I am. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. But they do. They have uh, 38 points, 17 points, 14 points, and 23 points. So we'll see. You know, they have some vertical game that we haven't had to that we haven't had to face yet this year, in my opinion, as well. So. Which which does scare me a little bit if they do have that because I also know that they did have that one running back that looked awesome at the end of the Notre Dame game. Jashawn Corbin, yeah, he's uh, actually Corbin, yeah, yeah, he's actually twelfth in the country in total yards and he's pretty good. He can he can cut it loose. 
Yeah. Dude, Florida State, guys, have you – like the running backs that these guys put out, it's it's it's, it's crazy. breathtaking. I went to go see Dalvin Cook come up to the dome when he ran for like, you know, 500 yards against oh. us. And I was just like, oh, my – I mean, I was just telling that story today. It, it's – it's rattling how good Florida State players can be and how bad their team success can be. Cam Akers. Oh. Well, yeah, Cam Akers, Dalvin Cook, Devontae Freeman. I mean, we've all had to go. Like, we've had to go against all of them. They're all NFL Pro Bowlers. Yeah. I mean, Jax, Peter, Jax, what, Jax Patrick just got signed by San Francisco off the patch, the, the, or the practice squad. So, right. um, I mean, that's another guy that was a huge guy. Uh it's, it's one of those things, though, Tyler, where um, they have two different quarterbacks that they played. Mackenzie M- Milton, right. um, transfer from, from UCF, mm-hmm. he has thrown um, – his longest throw this year is, is 23 yards. So, again, to, to Sean's point, like, to me, I, it depends on who they bring in. If they want to bring in Travis and he throws a couple deep balls, then that's fine. But, like I said, both quarterbacks have thrown four interceptions in four games. They have a lot of turnovers – and penalties and stuff like that. This and they team's get sacked. Gonna be, they get sacked a lot. They get sacked. Like and this so they still got a bad O line. Well, that's good. Yep. So I mean, it, I think they're more like us. Better, um, better r- rush um, blocking. Um, got it. Worse pass blocking. And um, yeah, they have they give up. I think uh, average of 190 yards passing, 190 yards rushing. So I oh think boy. That's... So I think I think their defense kind of is a little bit, but you know they know what's coming, right? So. And zero and four since the first time since the seventies. You know they're chomping at the bit. So again, this is a this is a game that, that scares me. Total defense uh, is ninety fourth, four hundred fifteen yards a game average. Right, but you got to look at the competition they play. I understand play, that, but that's their stats for the year. Got you. So um, with that, like I said, it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be close. Um, I'm going to go twenty four twenty three Syracuse with a late field goal to win. 24 to 23. Man, that's, that's a, a great one. I like that. Jeff. That's a that's an NFL game. Yeah, man. Um, except Defenses Cowboys are the strengths here, man. Uh, oh, yeah, your Cowboys, bro. Oh, my, God. oh my gosh. Just stop it. Again, love it. Um, I don't want to talk about it as a Giants fan. I don't want to talk about it. I, I'm, I'm not. Well, then let's not talk about it. First time in a, <laughs> first time in a couple of years, I'm actually scared of the Denver Broncos and the Chargers. So. It's been a while since I've Chargers, had to get... man, I, Herbert's, he's polarized. Legit. I, he's like my second favorite player in the NFL behind CeeDee Lamb right now. They're oh, legit. Uh, yeah. I love some Derek Carr. I, I like, I love Cole Beasley too. And I love Josh Allen. I really do. I don't know what How it is. Huh? How can you not? Josh Allen's the best. He's awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. I agree. I agree. And well, I love Cole Beasley Herbert's too. Herbert's got the best route runner, the route runner in the NFL with Keenan Allen too, so... Yeah, but Herbert has an absolute like laser beam for an arm. Yep. I mean, he's anyway. legit. He's Which legit. means Keenan Allen's always open. Right. That's what that means. <laughs> Imagine being Oregon's coach and just being like, "What am I going to do with this Justin Herbert guy? Like, I've certainly not throw the ball." Um, so <laughs> it's just like, can you believe like the that was accidental too, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> that, that that was accidental. The Justin Herbert thing last year, wasn't it? Wasn't it Tyrod Taylor or someone playing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And anyway, yeah. Um, am I? You're up, right, Tyler. You're up, Tyler. Yeah, you can. Know, you, know, you know, know. what? Well, I'm trying Don't to overthink it. What score I want. Don't. Um, <laughs> He's killing time, guys. I think we score four touchdowns, and I think that it's going to be two and two. Um, Sean Tucker is going to have to score two touchdowns. One for a long run, kind of similar to how he had that breakaway run. Uh, as a second touchdown, just to kind of show the defense, like, no, like, you, you can't stop me. And once he does that to a team, I've seen the team folds that sees him run past him. And uh, from that point forward, because um, I've been watching a running NFL team for so long in my life that I can kind of, co- like, start to quantify how long, you know, it takes for a team to wear down. But um, so I think we score four touchdowns. So Syracuse 28. And then, I mean, Florida State, 17 points, 28-17. Okay, yeah. that's a good score, too. No, nah, that's it's a good score. Because if they're getting sacked a lot. 14 total sacks for was, both quarterbacks. Yeah, 
the one thing that I was really impressed with was the pressure on Malik. Willis and the depth mm-hmm. in, in which we sacked him in the backfield. Like we were taking him down and moving him backwards. We haven't done that in a long time. And our edge rushers are really showing up. I think you brought it up on uh, the Sunday show, Roscoe and Okachuk, or I mean, they're, they've just been fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you throw that on top of those super seniors that they came back on that defensive line. And exactly. Uh, even Curtis Harper is, is in there. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely the difference so far this year in that in that um, on that line when it comes to getting that pressure, we almost don't even need to bring a blitz to almost get pressure at this point. And then you see the growth of Marlo Wax and Mikel <laughs> Jones is still. I mean, these guys. I mean, Marlo Wax just just. I mean, I thought Canton Can- Arcu played great last year. I did Marlo too. Wax I was... is like Marlo Wax is like, no, nah, I'm here. No, Sorry, I'm, I'm like I'm okay. Even better. Yeah. So no, those know, those he's linebackers are this. crazy. And even seeing the way the secondary, yeah, we've given up some big plays, but we've had some injury there. Um, and I think we're going to get Jihad Carter back. Um, and, Possibly and hopefully, you know, Chris Duchesne, Elmore. he learns from those double moves that he got beat with. I mean, you know, yeah. you got you to get beat by it to learn from it, right? So that's how that yeah, works. absolutely. And uh, there's, there's no doubt about that, as well as um, I think that overall the defense is just, they're, they're playing at a different speed this year. Our team speed on defense is, is totally different. And when Deuce is playing, I think when he's playing downhill, when they're playing in what we would call like a disguised cover two look, they're, I mean, our corners are just playing outstanding. The, how many pass breakups we have on Garrett's side, as well as the sure tackling with Deuce, it's, it's kind of pick your poison on um, you know what you want as far as the pass game. The disguise blitz by Michael Jones when he was kind of spy. It looked like he was spying, and then at the last second they finally bring him to. It was dude that one beautiful. play where they it's, were going it's back and beautiful. forth. They're, they're they on played an them. Show they're putting yep. on a show, and I'm watching yep. this as a defender, going like, "This is so much fun." I like if I was <laughs> if I was a recruit, I'd I'd want to play in that defense. I'm telling you, oh, it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Tony White is a big name. Uh, if he keeps coaching like this, he's probably not going to be a defensive coordinator for too much longer. Yeah, doesn't that suck? And um, <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does because that's what, what happens <laughs> with our offensive coordinator when yeah. we had the 10 and 3 year with uh, Sean Lynch and Dungy. And now he goes and he gets a job, and our offense has kind of struggled ever since then. So, um, you know, you hate to see it, but, you know, you see this growth, and it really is proof that last year he didn't get really a chance to get these guys in there and then one year of growth because we had some younger guys that were like okay we can play i see this i'm getting the mental down but i'm they're breaking tackles i need to put weight on and that's what you're not seeing this year you're not seeing the missed tackles as much to to tyler's point seeing the deuce chestnut some of these other guys come up justin Barron, who was a receiver when he came in coming up making these plays we're a very very a uh, better team at at um tackling this year for sure Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, it's just, it's like I said, after the game, I mean, I was just, I was on cloud nine. Like everything that you wanted to see as a fan, it was, it was kind of answered for, for that moment. Yeah. And, Absolutely. and also if Syracuse pulls this win off, let's say they pull this win off. This isn't, this isn't a win that, you know, is a gimme. Okay. From an 0 4 team, Right. Um, no, though, we though, as underdogs, right? It, right, yeah, four and yeah. a half points. Four and a half so, points. So yeah. with that said, I think this, despite the record of FSU going into FSU and coming out with this win, would be another would be a kind of a statement win for us. Had starting off ACC play, and people can poo poo it all they want, saying you know they haven't done any. They lost against Jacksonville State. Well, I don't care. I don't care because that would be four wins. <laughs> we'd be we'd be four and one. <laughs> Okay. At that point, I don't care. It's time to ball. I mean, that's it. And now you've set the standard. And from and from there on out, it's all about getting better. And like we talked about in the Liberty Post game, is watching the evolution of this team. And coach, I think, is just he's he's it's coming together. The offense is coming together. The defense is obviously together. But the offense is is going to hopefully evolve, and they'll hopefully figure it out. And as far as the quarterbacks go, Tyler, like we were talking about earlier, but I don't try to repeat myself, but Tyler wasn't here. I don't care who's playing. I just want the W. I don't care what the game plan is, as long as it's effective. Yeah, I I totally agree with what you were saying as far as the 
Whoever, and to me, that that goes for any position at any point whatsoever. And the only one that we care about is quarterback because we have decided that they are by far and away the most important thing in all of sports. So true. Yeah. So we'll see. Obviously, go Cuse. And um, oh. what a what a pleasant surprise, Tyler, joining the show. Yes, sir. And no one knows all of the technical difficulties we had. And maybe someday we'll tell the story. But for Tyler's no, 20... Need to know. <laughs> uh, but, all right, we th- appreciate all of you for joining us, especially Tyler. For Joe and Tyler, I'm Sean. We're out. Peace.